Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll, we will be continuing with our series Density Functional Theory in a Slide. Um, today actually though, uh, we're going to sort of do some foundational stuff, <clears throat> which is more sort of Hartree-Fock theory, uh, but it's equally applicable to density functional theory. <clears throat> so you're going to need to know this type of uh, stuff if you are going to be doing density functional theory calculations. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so to begin, we're going to have our Hamiltonian, which has these components, which are the nuclear kinetic energy, the electronic kinetic energy, the nuclear electron attraction, the electron electron repulsion, and the nuclear nuclear repulsion. Um, so if you're using quantum chemistry software packages, um, you'll be doing, you'll be mainly solving the time independent Schrodinger equation, which is your typical single point electronic structure calculation. Uh, in this, the nuclei are fixed. This is known as the clamp nucleus approximation, and so therefore the kinetic energy of the nuclei is not considered. Also, the nuclear nuclear repulsion can be calculated because your nuclei are fixed, and this is just a constant. So when you solve the electronic Schrodinger equation, your Hamiltonian is just this electronic Hamiltonian, which is the kinetic energy of the electrons, the electron nuclear attraction, and the electron electron repulsion. Okay, so when you go and compute the total energy in your single point calculation, you're really computing the expectation value of the Hamiltonian with um, some normalized wave functions for your system. And these wave functions are Slater determinants. So this, this might look like, or in Hartree-Fock theory or density functional theory, uh, well density functional theory you actually have the density, but uh, the foundation of density functional theory really, uh, for the most part, especially Combe-Sham density functional theory, I should specify, has very strong roots in Hartree-Fock theory. So we're gonna basically just go over this for now. Uh, and in Hartree-Fock theory, um, your wave function is a uh, Slater determinant because uh, the Hartree product, which was the original sort of wave function, does not obey the Pauli exclusion principle. So here I basically have what may look like a Hartree product, but actually this is supposed to represent a Slater determinant. and uh, what I do now is I expand the Hamiltonian. So this is the electro this is the kinetic energy of the electrons. So for all I electrons, this is the kinetic energy term. This is the electron nuclear attraction. So basically this is uh, this J, these J indices are for nuclei, the I indices are for uh, electrons. And here I have the electron electron repulsion term. Um, this is going to be a two electron integral, which we'll get to or you can think of this as a two electron operator. We'll get to this uh, in a subsequent video. Uh, should be a Brock cat over here. Maybe it's just not showing up on my screen. So this should be a little cat over here. Anyways, um, what we're going to do is we're gonna distribute this Brock cat into this kinetic energy term here. And you actually will uh, uh, distribute it into every term, but here I'm just gonna show everyone sort of some insight into just evaluating this one electron operator term. You could, e you could easily do this uh, procedure I'm doing here for this middle term, this electron nuclear repulsion. So what we do is we move the bracket of the Slater determinant into the uh, middle here, So, we, or you can think of it as taking out the summation. So that's what I did in this step one to two. Uh, then what we do is we're gonna basically loop over i. So i is your sort of variable. You can think of it in a for loop if you're gonna think about this in terms of uh, computational chemistry. And so I'm just going to show you a two electron example where I have I equal to one for the kinetic energy operator. So here what I do is I explicitly write the Slater determinant for a two electron system. So this will be like two occupied orbitals uh, in a two electron system. And so uh, I have this one half factor here because each Slater determinant has a one over square root of two. And so when, I'm, when I have them together, I basically multiply the square, one, of, one over square root of two by one over square root of two, and that's how I get this one half. I'll have a separate video on writing Slater determinants at some point. But anyways, this is a Slater determinant wave function for a two electron system. If you don't believe me, we can just swap the indices of, uh, of, of this, and basically what you get is the negative of this. So this would be, if this was two, one, minus one, two, um, that is the negative of 1, 2, minus 2, 1. So, uh, yeah, maybe take the negative of this and see if you get the same thing as swapping, and uh, you'll see this is a Slater determinant. Anyways, so we want to basically compute this term here uh, where we have the kinetic energy operator on electron 1. So how do we do that? So what we end up doing is we end up 
having to distribute everything, and we're going to end up getting four terms. So I'm just going to do this for the first term, but you, you'll be able to see how it applies to all four terms. So here I basically just do the first uh, thing I would get if I were to factor. So just, just do the FOIL. You know, you take this term, multiply it here, then take this term, multiply it here. Same with this to here, this to here. So in this case, I just show the very first one of these, where I take this phi1, phi2, and multiply it, or FOIL it to the phi1, phi2 here. And then I write it in integral terms. So you can see here, now I have the conjugates, because that's what this sort of bra vector is. And here I have the normal, the sort of non-conjugate, that's what this cat vector is over here. Uh, and just, just to remind you again, this should be a cat up here. Uh, for some reason I can't see it. Anyways, uh, what happens is I then use this integral property where I can separate the two integration variables like this, okay? And so now I have this sort of space over here where it's just completely uh, uh, or solely an integral over R2, the second electron, and here I have it over R1. And you can see here I have to have this differential operator on this side because it's operating on electron 1. Here it's not operating on electron 2. Then what I can do is re recast this in sort of the Brockett notation, and this term here, because we're using orthonormalized wave functions, will just become 1, and I end up just getting uh, the one electron term here. So you can see that uh, uh, what you'll end up doing is you'll you'll just basically get a bunch of these one electron terms. And the same thing would happen is if you if you tried doing this for this electron nuclear uh, term up here. And so at the end of the day, uh, you basically are going to do this over your for each one of these, uh, and that's how you'll get that's how you'll evaluate uh, this term one over here. And so uh, for each of these terms, I can actually compact these into a term called HI. And then I would just take this sum over HI and place it up here and just sort of go through this process for each term. And so it will be extremely cumbersome, but uh, yeah, this is, this is basically uh, how you do it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and uh, subscribe for more. Okay, thank you. Take care.